Oh, the Minnesota Wild messed around and found out what happens when you give the Devils too many power play opportunities. And also, let's talk about a sweet dynamic duo that the Devils have going for them. And let's also give an update on Nico Heischer and what his injury situation is looking like. We have a lot to break down in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. rodor has got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play play announcer. Dell's right for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part-time credential man member, Trey Matthews. Another game, another victory for the New Jersey Devils in this home-and-home home series against the Minnesota Wild. They came out victorious yet again, this time by a score of 5-3. to three. There's a lot to talk about in today's episode. In the first segment, I'm going to give you guys an update in regards to the Devils' captain, Nico Heischer, and his injury situation dating back to last week. And then I will continue to talk about the Devils is hot power play because the Minnesota Wild, they done messed around and they found out what happens when you're the worst penalty kill in the entire NHL and you give a team like the Devils so many chances on the man advantage. And then in the second segment, I'll highlight some players that don't really get the attention that they might deserve, but I'm going to give them their roses. And then I'll talk about a couple other players that are always talked about and they're one of the hottest duos in the entire NHL and then in the third and final segment like I do with every post game recap I will compare the stats and give the Devils a letter grade so let's start off with the main talking point going into today's game against the Wild and that is the injury situation involving Nico Heischer so a few days ago it was revealed by Amanda Stein that Nico Heischer alongside with Tomas Nosek and Colin Miller did not join the Devils for their four game eight day road trip now that left people rightfully a little concerned about the injury situation involving Nico because as you guys recall he took a dirty hit to the head Lindy Ruff revealed that it was going to be a day-by-day process and I'm here to spread some positivity and give you guys some hope. So once again, Nico is not day-to-day. According to Lindy Ruff, he is day-by-day. So they're just trying to take their time. As you guys know, Lindy said after the game against the Sabres that the reason why he sure was taken out of the rotation as the game progressed, it was due to precautionary reasons. And I get that he has not suited up in the last couple games for the Devils and he is not joining them on the road trip. But at the same time, I think they're just trying to take their time because it's better to be safe than sorry in this case, especially when you're dealing with a high caliber player like Nico. And also, here's something to take note of. Nico, unlike Colin Miller and Tomas Nosek, is not on the injured reserve list. He is still listed as a scratch for the Devils when the lineup cards are revealed. So just giving you guys that sort of hope. I don't know how much longer Nico is going to be out, but once again, He is not with the Devils on the current road trip, but we hope that he has a speedy recovery and I'm sending my well wishes to him. I get that people are a little concerned about the injury situation involving Nico, but let me share my thoughts on the matter real fast because I think this is a good chance for the next man up for the Devils to try to showcase their skill set. And in this case, it's Michael McLeod because it was quite evident last season that the Devils were relatively healthy. So one of the main talking points going into the season was like, could Jack Hughes, Nico Heischer, Mackenzie Blackwood, Jesper Brad, Dougie Hamilton, could they all stay relatively healthy to give the Devils a chance to win some games? And that proved to be the case because none of them, with the exception of Mackenzie Blackwood, missed significant amount of time. And as a result, the Devils had a historic season. But it's early in the year. Once again, Heischer is going to miss a few games for the Devils. But I like Michael McLeod on the top six for the Devils for the time being. Now, I'm not saying he's going to replace Nico, so please don't take that into consideration. I'm just saying while Nico is out, I said in the previous episode, which is Michael McLeod is capable of doing some of the things that Nico is capable of doing, but obviously he sure does it at a much higher level. But 
The thing that we rave about on the cloud for is that he's great in the faceoff department. He's also very scrappy. He's good at defense. And to start off this season, his offense has improved. So while I know it's a bit of a downgrade going from Heischer to McLeod, I think McLeod is showing why he's one of the best fourth line centers in the entire NHL and now promoting him to the top six. He's holding his own. And we're going to talk more about that in segment two. So once again, I hope Nico is back on the rank sooner rather than later. But I'm loving the next man up mentality for the Devils because it gives them a chance to showcase their depth and just show people that even if they sustain a major injury, they're able to still compete for wins. Look at the Carolina Hurricanes. They were down a few players during the playoffs. In fact, a few weeks left in the season and Andre Svechnikov goes down and he has to get surgery and he didn't play the entirety of the Stanley Cup playoffs. But Yet the Carolina Hurricanes were able to make it out of the first two rounds of the playoffs. They got to the Eastern Conference Finals. They took on the Florida Panthers. Unfortunately, the Panthers were the ones that would take on the Vegas Golden Knights in the Stanley Cup. But it goes to show you that it's just a good to have that next man up mentality. And it's good to have some depth pieces to your roster. So that way they can step up when the time is right. So once again, I'm not saying that Nico's injury is a good thing, but Looking at it in a positive aspect, at least the Devils can now try to see like how much further can their depth pieces go. And right now, like I said, Michael McLeod is doing well for a time being. So let's transition from injuries to now special teams for Devils because we're going to talk about the Devils is fantastic power play, but their streaky penalty kills. So when looking at the numbers, the Devils sit atop for power play success rate. They they have like a forty percent. Uh, plus clip and like I've been saying the past few episodes they're not going to maintain it the rest of the season but it's still very exciting to see because I said it in one of my more recent episodes as well is that it's really hard to defend the devils when they go on the man advantage because how do you stop them because once again you see Tyler Toffoli creating good looks for himself in the slot Jesper Bratt and also Jack Hughes they're great facilitators they're great playmakers they have speed to burn Luke Hughes Yes, he's still trying to work on his shot a little bit, but he's also a fantastic playmaker, and he can spot the open man. And then for Timo Meyer, we saw in this game, being a bully in front of the net, able to find a back of the net and score. We'll talk more about that in segment two. But the end-all, be-all is that this Devils team, while on the power play, very difficult to guard if you're the opposition, especially if you're the Minnesota Wild. And going into this matchup, you were tied for dead last in the NHL for worst penalty kill. So one of the things that I just noticed was that the Wild were giving the Devils some decent opportunities to try to uh, maintain their lead. And unfortunately, we saw it within the final 90 seconds of the game because Matt Bolte, he got an interference call on Jack Hughes. Jack baited him into uh, tying him up. And then Kirill Kaprizov, he was assessed high sticking Tyler Toffoli. So he also had to sit. So as a result, the Devils go on the five on three. Now, That is not a recipe for success if you're the Wild. And once again, you mess around, you find out. So what did Lindy Ruff do? And I'm glad that Bill Spaulding acknowledged this on air because Lindy Ruff sees that the Devils are on the five-on-three advantage. And yes, he could put in Luke Hughes, who I just said is a great facilitator, and he's been a huge catalyst as to why the Devils have been having the amount of success that they've been having on the power play. But for Dougie Hamilton, I'm just going to say this. Hamilton has the better shot. But Hughes is the better playmaker. But in this case, since five on three, you need someone with a good shot. And we saw it on full display when Dougie Hamilton had an absolute beauty of a clapper from the point, found the back of the net, went past Gustafson. And as a result, that was the final nail in the coffin for uh, the Wild, even though that the game was pretty much out of reach when they went on the five on three disadvantage but it was another victory for the boys in white and it was just so exciting to see anytime the devils went on the power play because if they don't convert on the power play i don't know about you guys but i am genuinely surprised when they don't convert even the second unit is still somewhat decent but that was the main power play that i just wanted to highlight because in my opinion that was the most exciting power play to watch because you knew what was going to happen you knew that the wild were not setting themselves up for great success But at the same time, you were just like, there's no way the Devils are going to get three power play goals, are they? There's no way they're going to get that amount of power play goals in a game. Lo and behold, they got it done. So it was another outing in which the Devils got a few power play goals to close out the matchup. So that was really exciting to see. But on the other side of things, we need to talk about their penalty kill because 
Coming into this matchup, the Devils were in the bottom tier in the league in that department. Now, I will give credit where credit is due. They have steadily improved, and uh, after the first period, they killed off eight of their last nine penalty-killing opportunities. But as we saw in period number two, unfortunately, they made another mistake defensively. Can't really put the blame on Vitek Vanacek. So Kirill Kaprizov, he got his third goal of the season. It was uh, shortly after Timo Meyer made it a 3 nothing game for the Devils. And we'll talk a little bit later about what the Devils need to do when they have a lead in the third and final segment. But for the time being, aside from that power play goal that they let up in period two to Kaprizov, I do want to say that the Devils have been improving somewhat while on the PK, and this was acknowledged by the MSG broadcast. So going into this matchup, the first three games, when we look at goals against rate over two minutes, the Devils had a number of 0.54, but the last five games, it was 0.21. So in that two-minute span, when they're on the penalty kill, teams are getting less and less shot opportunities. And then when we look at slot save percentage, first three games, 700. Then the last five games, 800. And I think you got to credit that to Vitek Vanacek because he made his third straight start for the Devils in this matchup. Now, was Vanacek as sharp as he could have been because we saw him let up a, a really weird goal to Middleton because Middleton let the shot go. Seemed like Vanacek just bobbled the puck. And I was just like, oh my goodness, how do you let that one go past you? That was embarrassing. So Vanacek was not as sharp as he could have been, but he got the job done. But it, going back to the goaltending, a lot of people were concerned about it to open up the season. I just said, you got to give people like Vanacek and Schmidt just some time to get accustomed, get back into the swing of things. And I think more likely than not, we're going to see Akira Schmidt in today's matchup against the St. Louis Blues. So once again, the penalty kill, it's starting to improve for Devils. It's still not where it needs to be, but they're heading in the right direction. And I just wanted to give credit to the goaltenders, especially Vitek Vanacek, who's been putting up some solid production for Devils in between the pipes the last three games. And that's why I wanted to see. I just said, give Vanacek more chances to start in a row. Obviously, during these last few stretches of games, it's given Vanacek some time to rest and recoup. So you're able to do that, and he doesn't get all that fatigue. But that's why I wanted to see, which is Vanacek, he should be the starter for the Devils, full-fledged, no ands, ifs, or buts about it. And if he's able to maintain what he's been able to do, just like get the job done and make those great ASAs when you need to, then I think we can see, once again, another 30-plus win season for Vanacek. Okay, let's highlight some players for the Devils that caught my eye. So as you guys know, usually I like to do my personal three stars of the game. And for the people who don't become my personal three stars of the game, I still like to give them a shout-out. I say an honorable mention. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to name four stars of the game because I feel like if I was to just say that this player was an honorable mention, I think I would be doing them a huge disservice. So we're going to do joint stars. So we're going to do a joint first star and a joint second star for a grand total of four players I want to highlight. I know it's unorthodox, but I feel like in this case, I have to because two players are not really going to be given the attention that they deserve. And the two other players, they've been phenomenal to start this season. And I really need to highlight how important their dynamic duo partnership is because it's been so great to watch for the Devils. But here are some honorable mentions that I feel comfortable listing as honorable mentions. So the first being Luke Hughes. He picked up one assist in this game, and it came when he got the secondary assist on Jesper Bratt's power play goal in period number three. So Hughes picked up his sixth assist of the season. So the one thing I want to say for Luke is that his shot is going to definitely come into fruition. But for right now, He's been a huge catalyst on the power play for the Devils. I love his playmaking ability. I love how he just sets up the offense. I love how he sometimes quarterbacks it. He's showing shades of what Quinn and Jack have been able to do in the league for quite some time. And right now, it should be no surprise that Luke is following in their footsteps. So I've been very impressed with Luke on the top power play unit for the Devils. I was a little sketchy about it at first. I said, can't we just put him on the second power play unit and then work his way up? But He's been a huge gamer for the Devils on that first power play unit. And if he continues to do what he's doing, which is racking up the points when the Devils go on the man advantage, then quite honestly, look out Connor Bedard, look out Logan Cooley. 
because you might want to be on the lookout in your rearview mirror for Luke Hughes because he is really good on this Devils team, especially with the amount of assets surrounding him. Might be a little unfair for someone like Connor Bedard and Logan Cooley, who are both on rebuilding teams, but Luke is working with what he has for the time being, and he's making the most of it. So wanted to give a shout out to Luke Hughes. Now, my second shout out goes to Timo Meyer because I talked about it in the first segment. He picked up a power play goal in period two. So what was Meyer doing? Hanging in front of the net, and it was a great setup between both the Hughes brothers and Jesper Bratt. Now, Jack and Jesper were given the assist, but if the NHL were to give a third assist, it would definitely go to Luke Hughes because he played a vital part in that overall setup, and Meyer is being a bully, hanging in front of the net, and as you guys know, Meyer was brought up to the first power play unit to replace Nico Heischer, and Meyer is now on a six-game point streak. So the reason I wanted to give Meyer an honorable mention is just because a lot of people were complaining about Meyer early on in the season, and they were saying the production wasn't there. But I'm here to just highlight that Meyer has eight points in nine game appearances, and he's really improved ever since being benched in the third period against the Florida Panthers. So I'm loving what I'm seeing from Timo Meyer these last few games. And yes, it's his second goal of the season, but once again, I would much rather Timo Meyer continue to rack up the assists and be some sort of X Factor player than him try to be a 40 goal scorer because you got Jack Hughes, you got Jesper Bratt, and now you got Tyler Toffoli. So, the one thing I want to focus on for Timo Meyer create good looks for yourself, create good looks for others, and then go from there. So, those are my two honorable mentions, which is Timo Meyer, six game point streak, scoring on the power play, and Luke Hughes being an absolute catalyst for the Devils, especially on their first power play unit. And now, let's look at some of my joint stars of the game. So the second stars of the game, it goes Alexander Holtz and Michael McLeod. So two players that we don't really talk about all that often on the show, but they definitely deserve their roses. So Alexander Holtz scored the first goal of the game. So my thing is, is like I was hard on Alexander Holtz going into season. I kept my expectations anywhere from Low to moderate, just because I was like, we've seen him perform well during preseason. We've seen him try to change his game during training camp. I will believe it when I see it. And right now, he's off to a pretty decent start. Now, he has been playing on the fourth line, which is a little weird considering the fact that he's a former seventh overall pick and the fact that the Devils have this high first round uh, draft selection on their roster playing on the fourth line. It's a little weird, but at the same time, I guess it goes to show you how deep this Devils team is once again. So I'm not going to complain about it, but at the same time, I think Alexander Holtz is making the most of it because Amanda Stein actually put this out on the X app. So during the 2022-2023 season, three goals, one assist in 19 game appearances. 2023-2024, this season, three goals, one assist in nine game appearances. So Alexander Holtz is slowly but surely getting his point production up a little bit. And on that first goal, he was just really quick, fast shot, fast skating ability, and the Devils were off and running to open up the game. So I really like that from Alexander Holtz. I think he's starting to showcase his speed. Now, like I said, I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon quite yet. I'm not going to admit that I'm wrong about him because I said he will be impactful, but I don't think he's going to be as good as people are making him out to be. But he's heading in the right direction, and I definitely got to give him credit in that sort of way. Now, the other player I want to highlight, and I sort of gave him his credit in segment one, and that is Michael McLeod, because Michael McLeod scored in this game. Now, I alluded to it in segment one. I said that Michael McLeod, his offense has indeed improved to open up the season because he's already picked up his second goal of the year, and it was a tip-in attempt near the net. Great setup by Andre Pilat and Jesper Bratt. I got to give credit for Pilat and Bratt on this one because on that particular play, Jesper Bratt is just flying down the rink and he's like a flash of lightning. Like I had to do a double take to make sure that wasn't Jack Hughes because Jesper Bratt, he is really taking his playmaking ability to new heights and that's why he's been able to rack up the points. But nonetheless, Andre Pilat picked up his third assist of the season. Michael McLeod doing what Timo Meyer usually does, which is hanging in front of the net and just trying to clean it up a little bit. Great setup, once again, by Andre Pilat and Jesper Bratt. So I don't know what was better, the setup or the finish, but Michael McLeod, I got to give him his credit because I think he has stepped up his game big time for New Jersey. 
And he did speak on just filling the absence of Nico Keisher. He was quoted to say, it's pretty hard to do. Nico is our leader. He's a huge part of our team. So guys are going to have to step up in huge areas. Nico plays huge minutes. Guys will have to take a lot of the heavy lifting, including himself. And right now he's owning up to it. And that line that he's on alongside with Jesper Bratt and Andre Pilat, it's been really good to see. So I've been very impressed with what Michael McLeod, these last couple of games against the Minnesota Wild, what he's been able to do in the absence of Nico Heischer. So one to give credit to Alexander Holtz and Michael McLeod, because if I just said they were honorable mentions, then I think I'd be doing both of them a huge disservice. But let's talk about a couple of players that I talk about quite frequently on this show, and that is Jack Hughes and Jesper Bratt. Because Jack Hughes in this game, he picked up, two more points, thus putting him at 20 points in nine games played so far. First and foremost, I got to give a shout out to Jack for being named the NHL's first star of the month of October. Well-deserved. He's been tops in power play numbers. He's been tops in points. He's got to be an early front runner for the Hart Trophy. Am I wrong? I, I don't think I am in this case because he's been an absolute dog for New Jersey to begin the season. And I'm really excited to see what he can do as the season progresses. So picking up two more points as a result, he has now put himself in the third position for most points before 10th game of the season. So Mario Lemieux, he had 31 points in less than 10 game appearances to open up the 1995, 1996 season. Then the great one, Wayne Gretzky, when he was playing for the LA Kings, 1993, 1994, opened up the season with 22 points in less than 10 game appearances. Then Jack Hughes, obviously, 20 points in nine game appearances. Then right below Hughes, Leon Dreisaitl, who won the Hart Trophy and the Art Ross Trophy in 2020. Same amount of points in less than 10 game appearances. Mario Lemieux once more, Ron Francis, Yarmir Yager. So Jack Hughes is with elite company for a time being, and I got to give him his credit. And not only that, I've been seeing more feistiness from Jack Hughes. And I know I talked about it at the beginning of the year, but it's so true because he was back at it once more. So he was getting into it with Joel Erickson Eck. Their sticks were getting tied up. And obviously Timo Meyer later had to intervene because he didn't want Erickson Eck to basically uh, pester Hughes anymore. But I'm loving the, the, the fight back from Hughes this season because he knows that there's going to be a target on his back. And the chances of him winning the Lady Bing Award have pretty much gone out the window. But I think Jack has his eyes set on the Art Ross Trophy and the big one, the Hart Trophy. So he's definitely heading in the right direction. But let's talk about Jesper Bratt, who finished with four points in this game. One goal, three assists. And yet, I don't think enough people are really talking about it. So your NHL point leaders at the time of recording, Jack Hughes with 20, Jesper Bratt second position with 18. Then when you look at power play points tied for first, Jack Hughes with 12, Jesper Bratt with 12. So both of them have been phenomenal five on five and also power play. So what a great duo that the Devils have right now. And Tom Fitzgerald has to be smiling ear to ear when he was watching this in the press box because the fact that he has both players locked up to long-term deals at pretty reasonable contracts because uh, Jesper Bratt is below the Jack Hughes annual uh, salary threshold. <laughs> Man, Tom Fitzgerald has to say, I got one hell of a steal. So for the next seven or so years, Devils fans, you will be seeing Jesper Bratt and Jack Hughes possibly taking the league by storm, because I think this is Jesper Bratt's time to basically break out of his shell and just get into the uh, NHL sphere more, a little bit more, so that way people can vote him into the all-star game and basically people take him a lot more seriously no longer an underrated player no longer a player that people sleep on I think Jesper Bratt is heading in the right direction the fact that he's tops with Jack Hughes early on the season albeit 10 games have not been played yet but like I said both of them are just trending in the right direction and I just love to see it so for Jack and Jesper I'm just seeing a lot of similarities I'm seeing both of them playing with speed being great playmakers finding the open man and Jesper Bratt, he's carrying over his success from the preseason because he was also racking up a lot of points. And he was saying over the summer that the, that he felt like there was a huge weight taken off his shoulders to get the contract extension done. Once he got it done, he could focus solely on hockey. In the back of my mind, I was thinking, oh, yeah, that's a cliche. 
he I'm, I'm sure a lot of people say that I'll believe it when I see it, uh, yada, yada, yada. But he's proving me wrong. He, he did take a lot of pressure off his shoulders and it's showing in more ways than one. So just for Brad and Jack Hughes, just impressive. They deserve to take a bow. And once again, they're tops in the NHL for power play points and also just points in the NHL. Great to see. And for the time being, them and also Tyler Foley, they are what's making this engine run for the Devils. But the Devils still have some improvements to make, especially on their defense, because I talked about uh, and lacks a lackadaisical effort on the Kaprizov goal they led up in period two on the penalty kill. But every team needs to improve on something, and that's just something that the Devils need to improve on. But at the same time, I'm loving what I'm seeing, especially from the offensive firepower for the Devils. Now, we're going to compare the stats and give the Devils a letter grade momentarily. But before we continue, I want you guys to make some extra cash. So why don't you head over to FanDuel? So score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks in your pocket if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over and unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the Taylor Swift League. I mean, the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And while you're at it, why don't you bet on some of the Devils' money lines? But please remember to do so responsibly. And now, do you want to see the Devils up close and personal? Well, let me get you hip to game time. So here's the thing. I love game time because they have last-minute tickets. Flash deals, zone deals, easy to find, and buy tickets of every kind in the event for your area. Views from all seats in the venue, lowest price guaranteed, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, etc. So it, it doesn't just have to be the Devils playing at the Prudential Center. Maybe you want to see wrestling. Maybe you want to see a concert. Whatever event comes to town, get to the Game Time app. So Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event. And even an hour before it starts, it's the place to find last minute seats. Trust me on this because I have bought tickets on Game Time app. I've also sold some tickets on Game Time app. It is a great app to use. So download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, so before we compare the stats, I want to do something new for the third and final segment. And this is something I'm going to try to continue to do if appropriate, which is I'm going to try to say one big improvement that the Devils need to make going into their next matchup. In this case, when this episode goes live, they're going to be taking on the St. Louis Blues on the road. So according to Bryce Salvador on the MSG broadcast, at the time the Devils were leading 3-2, to two, he said if the Devils held on to win the game 3-2, to two, then it will already be their fourth win with a single goal lead in regulation. They had seven total last season. Once again, I will repeat it. It will already be their fourth win with a single goal lead in regulation. If they held on to win three to two, they had seven total last season. So one of the big improvements I need to see be made for Devils is that when they have a lead, you have to maintain it. you got to add on to it because there were a couple times in this game where they allowed the Minnesota Wild to get back into it, and they were playing with fire as well. So Devils go up three to nothing, and then uh, Kaprizov gets a power play goal and cuts the lead to two. Then in period three, Marco Rossi, he scores the first goal of the final period of regulation, basically cuts the lead to one. Jesper Brandt gets a power play goal to put the Devils back up by two. And then, like I said in segment one, Middleton, he just shoots a puck from the uh, top of the point, and somehow, some way, Vitek Vanacek, he bobbled it after Curtis Lazar blocked it. And I'm just like, how do you let that slow puck roll in and find the back end of the net? That w- I was just dumbfounded by that. So once again, Jake Middleton scoring his second goal of the season on a fluke goal, if I've ever seen one. But nonetheless, that's something the Devils need to work on, which is when you have a lead, add on to it. Now, they did end up winning this game 5-3. to three. They did get a little lucky within the Final 90 seconds when Minnesota, for lack of a better term, decided to play somewhat wild to close out the game. Very sloppy. It was like they gave up on the game and uh, they, they they just couldn't get the extra skater to try to 
tie the game quickly. And, and as a result, the Devils win five to three. So once again, that stat doesn't apply to this game, but it doesn't take away from the fact that the Devils just need to work on just like getting a couple of goals to just maintain your lead and make it a little easier on yourself. So that's the one thing I want to see in this matchup against the Blues. Like if the Devils go out to a one nothing or a two nothing or a three nothing lead, build on it. Don't make it hard on yourself by letting your opposition get back into the game because that could be a recipe for disaster later on when you play some of these top-notch contending teams like the Colorado Avalanche or the Vegas Gold Knights or maybe the Boston Bruins, Carolina Hurricanes in our own division or the New York Rangers. I'm, I'm just listing off some good teams. I'm just saying like you don't want to play with fire in that aspect because if you allow them to get back into the game and regain some momentum, that's usually not a recipe for success. So just wanted to put that out there. So let me know what you guys think about me adding that into the third and final segment. But nonetheless, let's compare some stats and I will give the Devils a letter grade. So for the first game of November, shots on goal differential, 38 to 25 in favor of the Devils. Face-off percentage, Devils thrashed this department, 63.3%. Wild had 36.7%. Power play, Devils were three for five. Wild were one for two. Once again, Devils starting to improve on it just a little bit, but they've led up a couple of power play goals to the Wild in this home-and-home home series. And once again, I know the Wild went one for six in the first matchup, but it, it, the, trust me, Vitek Vanacek was just really good in between the pipes and the Devils were just counting their lucky stars and, and just uh, escaping by the skin of their teeth on some of those PKs. So starting to improve just a little bit more, but could be better. Hits 22 to 10 in favor of the Wild. Blocks 12 to 11 in favor of the Wild as well. So if I had to give this game a letter grade for the Devils, I'm going to say a B minus because the Devils just got lucky within the final 90 seconds when the Wild decided to just play somewhat recklessly and send a couple guys to the penalty box. Devils go on the five on three advantage. And yeah, so they, they got a little lucky and I'm glad that they were able to capitalize on that opportunity. But it still doesn't take away from the fact that the Devils didn't make it easy on themselves and they were allowing the Wild to get back in the game. That cannot happen. Penalty kill, once again, needs to improve just a little bit more. Vitek Manchek, he got the job done, but I was very proud with some of the underrated players like Alexander Holtz and Michael McLeod. So let me know what you guys thought about this game for the Devils. Who were some of your big-name players that you highlighted in this game? What do you think of the Devils' as power play, and what should the Devils do in their next matchup against the St. Louis Blues? If you're watching on YouTube, Leave a comment down below if you're listening on podcast streaming service. Hit me up on my personal X page app at Trey Matt 4 and the show's X page app at Locked On Devils. As for his episode, that's what I'm gonna have for you. So continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.